I think the logical starting point in a phonic sequence is with the basic short vowels a, e, i, o, a. The vowels form the foundation of the pronunciation of words. And when children read and write words using a phonic approach, the easiest way to do this is by using vowels as the basic building block. A, e, i, o, a is how I pronounce them. But there isn't just one correct way of doing this. English is, of course, a world language, and there are many different alternative ways of pronouncing these letters. The important thing is for you as a teacher to be consistent. If you pronounce the letter A, A, one day, and R, another day, it is unfair to the children. Fortunately, there is an effective way for both the teacher and the children to pronounce the sounds in a consistent way. What do you think is the basic phonic pronunciation of this letter? I say A. Ah. How about this one? I say A. Ah. A. Ah. A. Ah. A. Ah. A. Ah. There are many English as a foreign language learners who at first find it difficult to distinguish sounds such as a ah and a, ah, especially children learning English for the first time. And it can also be difficult for teachers to always pronounce these sounds in the same way. How do you pronounce this word? What's the starting sound? However you pronounce the first sound in apple, that's how to pronounce the letter A. It is much easier for both the teacher and the children to pronounce a word in the same way consistently than to pronounce an isolated sound in the same way consistently. We can also easily hear if two sounds are different. If we say R, ah, apple, we can all hear that it is different, including the person who is saying it. So apple is what's called the anchor word for A. If you use anchor words when introducing sounds, it is much easier for the children and the teacher to pronounce sounds consistently in the same way and also to distinguish different sounds. I suggest that rather than calling this a, ah, both you and the children can call it a ah, apple and call this a ah, umbrella. And we can use cards with the letter on one side and the anchor word on the other side. We continue to call letters a ah, apple or a eh, elephant until the children can easily distinguish the sounds. Notice that I just said a ah, apple. I didn't say things like a says a ah, or a says a ah, apple. For native speakers of English or English as a second language learners, a says a ah, might be okay. I'm not teaching those children phonics, so I'll leave that for others to decide. What I can say for certain is that for children learning English as a foreign language, with little exposure to English outside class, it is much faster to only use the sounds, not combine them with the names of the letters. A says A ah is a kind of knowledge, not a skill. It is a two-step translation process. Of course, many children can acquire the skill over time using this approach but it is much faster if the children instantly think of a sound when they read a letter, without interference from the name of the letter. They just do it. They don't translate it or analyse it. When they read, they just say or think, ah. If you need to teach ABC, I suggest doing this as a separate activity from when you teach phonics. 
though even this is not as effective as getting rid of ABC altogether. So what's the next stage after the basic vowels? It's the consonants, which can also be learned through anchor words. How is this letter pronounced? I would say D. And in the early stages, the children would call it D dog. In the same way as with the vowels, the children would continue calling it D dog until they don't need to use the anchor word to help them. The pronunciation of the consonants is where I think there is another difference between teaching phonics to native speakers and possibly second language learners as well, and teaching phonics to foreign language learners. Children who are native speakers can already pronounce English and distinguish sounds before learning phonics. And English as a second language learners can acquire much of these skills from natural interaction outside the classroom. There are many English as a foreign language learners who are in quite a different situation. Many are establishing their pronunciation of English and learning to distinguish some of the sounds for the first time through phonics. With foreign language learners, I think we need to be careful that the consonant sounds the children learn with anchor words are easy to say and help them clearly identify and distinguish the consonants. I'll show you what I mean. B book K cat D dog Those ones are straightforward. But there are other consonants where things are not so straightforward. Here's an example. How do you pronounce this letter? When I train teachers these days, I find that many teachers pronounce it something like oh. This seems to come from certain phonics programs, and it is understandable because of the phonetic pronunciation of the letter L but I think there are problems with doing things this way, at least for English as a foreign language learners. One reason is that some teachers and children find it difficult to pronounce the sound clearly. Another reason is that in many pronunciations of English, the pronunciation of the letter L varies according to its position in a word. The anchor word is for the pronunciation of the letter at the beginning of words, which is called onset. A third reason is that I think some approaches to phonics overemphasize the importance of phonemes. Phonemes are, of course, extremely important, but so are onset, rhyme, and how easy or difficult it is for the children to say and distinguish sounds. Let's look more closely at the letter L. If you are teaching children who have a particular problem with the pronunciation of L, such as distinguishing it from R, it is important that the children can clearly distinguish the sound and do this in a relaxed and fun way. I think it is better to pronounce the letter L, 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 Lion. Notice how clear it is for the children and how easy it is for the tongue position and movement to be the same as at the beginning of the anchor word. While we are on the subject of distinguishing the letters L and R, the same applies to the letter R. Some teachers pronounce this something like er, though this varies a lot according to the accent of the teacher. I think it is easier and clearer for both teachers and children to pronounce it r, r rabbit, or r ring. So how do we make this fun? R, r, r. What am I doing? The children usually think I am growling. So something like a cute dog or an angry growling dog can become a hint for the pronunciation of the letter R. 
If I want a child to self-correct her pronunciation of R, I can have a toy dog or puppet miming growling at her, and it reminds her how she needs to position her mouth. La, la, la. What am I doing? La, 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 la. It usually reminds the children of singing. So singing can become a hint for the pronunciation of L, and the prompt might be a bird, for example. The children can play games where they hear a word or see a picture that begins with the letter L or R and try to touch or run to the letter L or R and start growling or singing and then say the word. What I am suggesting is that the consonants are pronounced in a way that is the most helpful for pronouncing the initial sound of the anchor words. The only exception is the letter X, which it is probably best to refer to as X, X, box. Except for xylophone or possibly X-ray and some place names, there are really no useful words for children that begin with X. So what I am suggesting is that we introduce the pronunciation of consonants in a two-step process. First, using the anchor words to help children read and write the letters, distinguish sounds, and pronounce the initial sounds of common words. And then, moving to the second step, where we combine vowels and consonants. And I will look at this in the next video. Thank you.